It's rough out there, you know, in the world. Some of us turn to writing for solace and inspiration. Text that helps us take in the dark and find the light. So if you are someone who wraps themselves in words to warm your heart, or maybe just looking for a little help getting through the day, week, year, join us as we talk to people about the pieces of writing they use to bolster their souls and remember their way. The good bones that remind us we can make this place beautiful. Hello, welcome to the Finding Good Bones podcast. I am Amy, one of your co-hosts. I am Kate, the other co-host. And yes, welcome um, to the first episode of Woo-hoo! Finding Good Bones. Woo! Um, if it wasn't clear in our little intro section that just happened, um, this is a podcast that is all about our favorite pieces of writing that both acknowledge the darkness and the pain in this world, but then also provide a shift in perspective to help us keep moving through it and want to move through it and want to stay. Um, That's what this podcast is about. So Mm -hmm. uh, we are your hosts and then we will have a guest shortly who will t- yes. who will bring their piece of writing? It is writing. Yes. I know we've gone over this before, but um, yes, it is writing. So uh, we will have a guest every episode, and today's guest is Kate. Fake today's- out, it's me. <laughs> but don't worry, it won't always be me. Uh, just for this one. But uh, yeah. So before before we kind of get into that interview bit, Amy, what are you reading right now? What am I reading right now? Well, right now, or what, what are I'm you reading? excited about, like on your, on your short list? On my short list, okay. I'm just going to be honest about darkness and light. Right now, what I'm doing is a huge reread of the Terry Pratchett books I love because <gasps> oh, lovely. inside my head is too much darkness right now, and I just mm-hmm. like the comfort. So I'm sinking into the comfort yeah. of the Terry Pratchett books with Samuel Vimes and Granny Weatherwax. Oh, I Those love are it. My comforts. That's where I'm going right Susan. now. Susan. Yeah, Susan. The granddaughter Susan death. of death. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, that's lovely. Yeah, that's where I am. Yeah. And what have you brought us today, <laughs> Kate? Uh, um, that you want to talk about? Oh, well, were you going to ask me what I'm reading? Oh no. Oh yeah, Kate. What are you reading right now? <laughs> it's fine. Never mind. No, go um, on. No, I'm. I yeah, for, look, like I'm not going to talk about what I'm reading. Well, <laughs> I have a couple of things going. I am reading a book by uh Hold on. It's over in my room. Um which is not far. I'm in my home, which is close. Uh yeah, I'm reading a book by Sasha Sagan, who is Carl Sagan's daughter, called For Small Creatures Such as We, Rituals for Finding Meaning in Our Unlikely, it's probably, yeah, Unlikely World. Um, And so Carl Sagan, notably a very secular person, um, as, as is his daughter who is writing this book, but it's all about the importance of ritual in our life and um, different ways to do that, both spiritually and not spiritually. So that sounds it's beautiful. Good. It's very yeah. beautiful. I cry, <laughs> and it it sounds when I like it. actually yeah. it fits really well into like the whole concept of what it, we're doing right here. It's right? actually like not why I'm reading it, but yes, uh, <laughs> yes, it does fit very well in. Yeah, um, I'm not sure it exactly like explores or you know looks at entirely the darkness but that is an intrinsic part of rituals though you know because very often they are patterns repeated behaviors and and groups and communities that mark events um and and help us find connection to move so yeah i guess it's just like spot on good job me (laughs) good work good work okay i jumped ahead before now we yeah. have heard what you're reading now. Now let's hear what you brought us to talk about. Oh, Amy, today. would you like to introduce us to our guest? <gasps> yes, my guest today 
is Kate Caldwell. <laughs> she is one of Hi. my very best friends in the world. Aww. The Aww. first time I met her, she gave me angry face, and she assures me now that that wasn't because she was mad at me. So we are now, we are now. Super no, that was just my face. <laughs> it still is my face. No, it remain. It remains my face. <laughs> no, absolutely um, not. The, yeah, look, look. If you were to see me at six forty-five in the morning, yeah, hundred percent. Which is when yeah. we met. It was a six forty-five yeah. in the morning, um, years ago. Years ago. Okay, Kate. Do you want to tell us anything about yourself before I, we begin? Uh, yeah, yeah. I am the co-host of a podcast called Finding Good Bones. This is just going to be circular and circular. <laughs> we can do this. All right. Nice work. The link to the Thank podcast you. will be in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So yeah, so the the poem that I have brought today is uh, the poem by Maggie Smith, "Good Bones," and this is actually uh, quite clearly uh, the namesake of this podcast. Um, it is a, a, I think, a very heart rending poem, and. Uh, one that I have called back to many times. Um, and I want, I wanted a podcast that helped me find things like this, more things like this. So now we have one. Yeah. Okay. Do you want, should I read it? I really want you to read it. Okay. Good Bones by Maggie Smith. Life is short, though I keep this from my children. Life is short and I have shortened mine in a thousand delicious, ill-advised ways. A thousand deliciously ill-advised ways I'll keep from my children. The world is at least 50% terrible, and that's a conservative estimate, though I keep this from my children. For every bird, there is a stone thrown at a bird. For every loved child, a child broken, bagged, sunk in a lake. Life is short, and the world is at least half terrible, and for every kind stranger there is one who would break you, though I keep this from my children. I am trying to sell them the world. Any decent realtor walking you through a real shithole trips on about good bones. This place could be beautiful, right? You could make this place beautiful. Okay, Kate. Uh, yeah. Every time, every time I see that poem, every time I read it, yeah. It, as I told you before, sort of breaks me. Um, mm -hmm. And you're reading it right now. Also, your voice sort of broke me. But let's oh, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That means a lot for, the, for that break. Um, <laughs> okay, it's so important. I want it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's why we're here because we look exactly. For these. We, an important <laughs> we ritual. For these the breaking yeah. and the and the reforming. And the yeah. yeah. Okay, so I want to talk to you about, you know, how did you find this poem? I, I mean, I can safely say like the internet. Um, <laughs> I, I, while I will buy novels um, all the time on like a whim, I don't really buy poetry without like a fair amount of vetting first. Um, I used mm -hmm. to do the same thing with like CDs where I had to like a certain <laughs> number of songs on a CD. I, I realize it's different now because of like Spotify. Um, but like certainly the internet, I don't know if it was like specifically Instagram at the time, um, mm -hmm. but it, it would have been, you know, either like one of the poem subscriptions, email poem subscriptions I have or something like that. Um, it was, but it was definitely like, yeah, probably mid teens, not mm -hmm. of my life, but of the, tw of this millennia. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was, so. it was a beautiful thing you came across. Mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. accidentally it, it might have been i know this poem really blew up around like 2016 the 2016 election and it very well could have been <laughs> around that time mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think that's um, when i saw it yes yeah so it's been around and i've I've come back to it many times um so what do you what do you love about it why do you keep coming back to it uh, it holds so many things so many opposites together and it so succinctly explores such big emotions and such 
concepts, um, difficult concepts, right? And it does it all in a few lines. I mean, not like a few, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit longer than like a, a three or four line poem, but it is, there's not an extra word in that poem. And I love that about it. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, yeah, just, I love the theme of what, and I loved this before I even had kids, right? Like, well, I Mm -hmm. have a kid. Um, but like, what do I keep to myself and what do I share? Right. In particular, like to people who are forming their worldview in part based on mine. Mm. What do I, what do I, what do I let them discover? Um, how, you know, but then how can I also like protect them? Right. And that very, Mm -hmm. it's such, they're, you know, they're kind of two polar opposites on protection with information, right? Like there can be protecting somebody from information. And then Mm -hmm. there's also protecting somebody with information. And Uh, yeah, yeah, I think this poem beautifully navigates that in a very, uh, in a very subtle way. Um, I also, I really love the line, uh, like delicious, ill-advised ways, deliciously Mm -hmm. ill-advised ways. And the, like, yeah, I have certainly made some choices (laughs) that, uh, have probably (laughs) very deliciously shortened this life of mine. And, uh, you know, not, not really necessarily doing them now, but, but I've done them and Mm -hmm. I can't, and I would, even though I have this knowledge now, right. That perhaps that wasn't the best choice. If I'm being very generous with that, perhaps, um, (laughs) it, it was worth it or it was a moment. It's my moment and it's a part of my history. And then Uh it's also like that, like what's mine and what's, what's the people I love, right? Like, what mm-hmm. do I, you know, and again, not just kids, but also like parents sometimes or friends, but like, mm-hmm. what parts of myself do I share? What parts of my own history do I share versus what I, um, what I kind of keep as mine? So those so are all s- things okay. that I love. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. So I was, uh, I love, I was going to ask you about your favorite line or section, but and you just told us that, but I do want to say something because you mentioned that there's not a spare word in this poem. You're absolutely so. right. And yeah. what's interesting though, is that there are some repetitive parts like delicious mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. the couple the last couple lines, but they're so powerful because they're repetitive. Exactly. And, and and because because it's clearly a choice, right? It's intentional yeah. and it's a build. It's not necessary. Like I think that could be a difference between repeating something and building on something. Mm-hmm. Is that an intentionality? Um, I I don't know if that's exactly my favorite favorite section of it. Um, I really love that that twist. I don't, it's not exactly a twist, but that comparison at the end, right? Of like I'm trying to sell them the world. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's a shithole, but couldn't you make it better? Won't you make it better? Won't we in many ways make it better? Cause I don't, you know, I'm not saying this to my two year old. Um, <laughs> I say it to myself. Right. Yeah. And, and so I am both the realtor and the, um, reality. Is that a, <laughs> Is that a professional term? Um, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I am both the realtor and the person walking through the shithole, right? Uh-huh. Uh, yes. I am often trying to sell myself on on the world. And, and that, you know, again, when we talk about kind of what I'm hoping, what we're hoping to capture in this, in this podcast and in these conversations, it is that like, well, yeah, we're walking through it and man, it sucks, but also it's, it could be beautiful or it is beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, if we just if we look for it. Yeah, in the poem itself, um, there. Okay, I like the parts. I actually I hate these parts, but I mm-hmm. love these parts. The mm-hmm. part, the part that starts for every bird. There's a stone thrown oh, at a bird. Oh God! Yeah, the bird itself is beauty. Mm-hmm. So there is, it's there. So it's not just that we're relying on the person addressed 
in this poem to be the ones who make it beautiful. There is beauty. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But we do need them to see it. We need us to see it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And yeah, this duality. Um, now, look, I read this to my husband and he, t- I, and I, I'm so used to it. Mm-hmm. The harshness of that, of that middle section, right. Mm. Where it is the comparisons and, and particularly with, um, you know, a child, a loved mm-hmm. child in a child broken bag, sunk in a lake. Like I forget because I've gone over it so many times, mm-hmm. um, but I was mm-hmm. reading it to him and, and like there were tears that formed in his eyes. And then yeah. he was like, that's brutal. And I was like, oh, it yeah, is. it is. It, but that, I mean, you know, it's, but it's brutal, important. No matter how many times you read it, you do oh, yeah, know yeah. it's there. Um, yeah, that part, every time I read it, I'm like, I know that part's coming. Here it comes. Oh, there it is. Ah. And then I'm past it and I'm thinking about the good bones. But yeah, that part, whew, it gets me. Yeah. Um, what did you expect when you showed it to the father of your child? What did you expect? Did you, I mean, what, what did you, I don't mean, didn't you expect him to be sad? I meant like, why did you share yeah, that with him? Yeah. What, what, how, um, what made well, you want honestly, to? Honestly, Amy, I was trying to explain the name of this podcast. <laughs> Um, but also I wanted him, no, I wanted him to, to hear it. You know, he's, he is a person that feels, um, Mm -hmm. like every person, every person feels it's just a matter of acknowledging it both to ourselves and others, but whatever. Um, but he is a person that, um, I, I know that he struggles to see the light. And so I do think that that's why I, I, that's why I think, um, also like that line stuck out to him a bit more is because he trends to like the, sorry, Alex, he trends to like the, <laughs> he would say this though. Uh, he trends uh-huh. to the world is at least 50% terrible. And I think he can get real hung up on that at least 50% terrible. And I think I have an uh-huh. easier time like moving through it. Right. Like what you just said, mm-hmm. like, Ooh, it's coming. Ooh, it's rough. Oh, I'm past it. Okay. Uh-huh. Moving on. Uh, you could make this place beautiful. So yeah. I, I should have um, expected him to be a little bit more moved by that um, uh-huh. is th- yeah. what I should have done. But no, no, yeah. I, ju- I, I definitely wasn't judging by se- when saying like, what did you expect, Kate? That's not- <laughs> what did you expect when you talked about dead children in a lake? Like, did you just expect him to not feel things like you? Um, uh, no. And I, again, I do. No, feel things. that is not it's what just, I asked. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I think this is a great introduction to our podcast and to what we're doing here. The podcast itself, we hope, is doing the job of this poem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's also a little bit why it is in the name. Yes. And that is not a copyright infringement from my limited and actually negligible understanding of copyright. It's so. 100% not a copyright <laughs> infringement. Um, Okay, so that's our first piece that we discussed, and we are going to be having other guests on to discuss. Oh yeah, their yeah. Don't pieces. worry, Can't dear wait. listener. Um, it will not just be us. In fact, it will mostly be us and other people. But yeah. then also every it now will. and then, like we're going to talk about because we're into it. Yeah, I mean, I, we are into breaking our hearts and then repairing them. Exactly. I mean, it's going to be yeah. my turn to be the guest at some point soon. So I'll bring something that'll break you. That's my whole, that's my goal. That's silly. Break you. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's that's not a silly, silly goal. That's a silly goal. Bring something that breaks you. Oh my gosh. This is why you're That's the point. The point friends. is not to break me. The point is to this, break you. This is why you're my friend. Because <laughs> you turn it like that, and I love it. Um, <laughs> okay, I think that's and so, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's part of like that's most of it. So we'll be closing today's show with really, I guess, a request from us for requests from you, our listeners. Um, so ideally, how we'd like to end the show is with um, a r- request for a recommendation. Um, we do we're we're pretty into um, pieces of 
writing that explore the light and the darkness. Um, and so, you know, we're hoping if our readers are wanting to have a recommendation, aside from just what's being currently discussed in this show, um, they can write in to findinggoodbones at gmail.com. We'll probably have a section of this on our website. Or we no, will. nobody knows. We do have a section <laughs> sure. about this on our website. We it's absolutely there. do. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The uh-huh. website is published already. Yes. Uh-huh. And we have a section explaining this a little bit better. There's um, a link to it in our show notes. There is. It's I keep saying fully, that. It's a, fu- it's a fully live link that exists right now in this moment in time. I just um, like saying the word show notes. I don't know why. So. Show notes. Show Amy's, I mean, and obviously, like this section is going to be called Amy's show notes. <laughs> okay. No matter what, it's Amy's show notes. We got um, it. One of my favorite things, this is completely separate from everything else, but like one of my very favorite things in writing, fake footnotes. Oh, yes. Footnotes that reference yes. some, a completely like made up text for that world. Uh, mm-hmm. Susanna Clark does an amazing job of that in Jonathan Strange and Mr. Yes. Like just. Oh. Ooh. I need to reread it. Anyway. That. Yeah. It's so good. Um, so, but going, so, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Ultimately, what you will be able to read about on our website is uh, we would love for you to write in if you are, if you are looking for something um, and just give us a bit of information about yourself. It doesn't even have to be like a full name or anything like that, but maybe a little bit about like what you're currently into, what you like to read. Um, and you know, if you want to share a little bit about what you're going through, uh, or, you know, why you're, why you're looking for this right now. And, um, then after we give the recommendation, you can judge us on how we did with our recommendation, which in some ways, you know, cause I guess that's a nice thing, right? Like either the piece of text that we recommend will help you or, you know, I find a good judging to get me through a lot we know turmoil yeah. oh <laughs> rude but uh, rude but true yeah the Kate so, Caldwell story <laughs> yeah. okay so yeah email us findinggoodbones at gmail.com go to our website and because it's there excited. we're excited to hear yeah because Kate made it it is there um we're excited to hear from you we're excited to have this podcast yeah and so thank you um for joining us today, whatever day that might be. Um, and thank you for, yeah, we hope that you continue to join us as we go finding good bones. Mm-hmm.